Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we've been taking a closer look at the works of mercy, first the corporal works, and now the spiritual. Today, the final spiritual work of mercy, praying for the living and the dead. We've already discussed why we should pray for the living, and much of what we said there also applies here. However, because dead people are very different from the living, there are a few other things to point out. First, that again, the only point in praying for the dead is to help them in some way. If the dead person you're praying for is in heaven or in hell, that just is impossible for different reasons. If the dead person is in heaven, they're already perfectly fulfilled and happy. Therefore, there's nothing you can really do to help them any more than they're already being helped. If it were possible for their state in life to improve any further, they wouldn't be in heaven. If the dead person is in hell, they're permanently separated from nearly all goodness, so praying for their state to improve or for some good thing to be given to them would really just be a waste of time. This is why some people don't even pray for the dead at all, especially certain Protestant denominations who only believe in heaven and hell. However, for those of us who also believe that there are other possible, more temporary afterlives, like purgatory, praying for the dead makes perfect sense. Praying for the dead has a long history, predating even the time of Jesus. 2 Maccabees, chapter 12, which was removed from Protestant Bibles by Martin Luther, probably for this very reason, tells a story of a great warrior named Judas, who found that some of his dead soldiers had amulets of Jamnia around their necks, forbidden pagan items of other gods. Of course, that was very sinful, so Judas took up a collection and had a sacrifice made for the dead soldiers, and the final verse of the chapter says it all. It is therefore a holy and wholesome thing to pray for the dead, that they may be loosed from sins. 2 Maccabees 12.46 So we should pray for those who die in sin, but who aren't immediately sent to hell, so that they may be loosed from sins and assumed into heaven. Next, what can we learn from the works of mercy in general? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.